Hello, everyone. This is Kristen with the LTRC. Thank you for joining us for creating document automation systems with our sponsor, NACLI, as part of the LTRC Industry Insights Series held every Wednesday. Our speaker today is Kim Mayberry. Kim Mayberry is the CEO of NACLI and has worked in the document automation industry for the past 20 years. Kim has a master's in operational excellence from The Ohio State University and is a Six Sigma black belt. He has consulted with law firms during that time to create solutions that are effective and efficient. Thank you all for joining us. We will now begin the webinar. Hey, thanks, Kristen. I'm excited to be here and to talk to you about systems and specifically how we can create systems and, and documents um, and how automation can play into it. So to start off, let's just talk about what are, you know, what is a system? Because sometimes you need to know exactly what that is. Um, one, it's repeatable. So can I go through and repeat the steps to be able to have a people um, accomplish the task over and over again? Second, is it easily trainable? So how do we make a, a, a system that is easy that you can have staff member, you can bring on new staff members that can get on and do the system quickly and as efficiently as possible. And third pillar is efficiency. So is it efficient? So how do we make things that are more efficient? So to start off, I'd like to just do the kind of a first poll question um, about what, what are people using right now in their documents? So we'll just pull it up. Are you currently using document automation? That's kind of yes or no. All right, so we've got uh, about 23% say yeah, 77% uh, percent, uh, no. So perfect, that just kind of gives me a feel for who's on the call and you know wh where your position is coming from. So thank you very much for that. So now let's talk about how do we make a system? What is the process? Um, you know, I, I go through this exercise um, in, in a second, you're gonna see what it is. You may laugh to yourself. You may think this is really dumb, um, but I want you to get out a piece of paper um, on your desk right now. And I want you to go ahead and draw a pig. Um, when you're thinking about this pig, I want you to think about what kind of pig I'm drawing. And I'm gonna do the same experiment experiment and I'm going to draw mine and I am not an artist and you will see that and that's okay uh, but here's here's the reality so all right so everyone's draw, drawn their pig and if you can see mine it, again I am not an artist so you can kind of see the picture of mine it's terrible but I asked you to draw a pig so how many of you, um, you know, the second poll question, how many of you drew a pig that looked like mine? We had, we had some that said yes, that's great. We had no, and then we had how would I, a certain percentage there. So the majority was no. And I didn't expect that you were going to build to draw a pig like mine, but let's correlate this to when you are in your office environment, you go to someone, you say, hey, can you do this task for me? And you set, you, you, they go through and they do that task and it comes back and, you know, unless they, you've been working with them a long time and they've done that task for you multiple times, they come back to you and you don't get what you expect and you're really frustrated you're like ah, what is going on here this person can't get this right i want you to think back to this pig experience experience and think hey wait a minute maybe it was because i didn't have a system i wasn't able to you know going back to those three pillars i i didn't have something that was trainable i didn't have something that was repeatable so Think about that as you think about uh, this experience is that, you know, 
you've got to have a way to show people what it is they want to do. So, okay. Now the next step is, is I want you to flip your paper over. Um, and usually what happens now is that you have this aha moment and you think, Hey, all right, I am going to create, um, I, I'm going to do better. I'm going to write down a task list. And in kind of manufacturing and things, it's called a standard operating procedure, um, SOP. And when you, and you think, all right, I'm going to write all this down. I'm going to get it down so that uh, they can follow these directions along the way. So what I want you to do now is follow the directions here and create the pig based on these directions. So we're just going to give you uh, a minute to try to go through it. And you're probably thinking, what in the heck are you talking about here? All right, let's go ahead and pull up the, the next poll, the SOP poll. And as you're kind of finishing things up, you can you can go through and, and put things in. So, you know, is this easy? Is this, was it kind of a medium? Was it hard? Um, based on looking at what I provided here, uh, standard, op standard operating procedure, um, certainly a checklist um, could be similar. Was this easy or hard if you can just put in your information there? And how, how you felt it was. Perfect. We had 4% said easy, 32% medium, and 64% said hard. So that gives us an idea of how easy or hard it was. And it was hard. If you went through it, um, it, it, it wasn't, you know, draw a letter at M across the top of the left intersection. Here's what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like you're basically just put the, draw, the lines across and, and, and then it walked you through. But if, if we were in a, a, a position where we needed to reproduce these pigs over and over again, and we wanted to train new people on it, then we would really want something more visual. How can we visually make it easier to go through and do it? And if I were to, would have showed you this, you would like, oh yeah, I can do that. And you would have drawn it up it, super easily. So kind of as you think about systems, remember those pillars and remember that it's got to be repeatable. It's got to be um, trainable and it needs to be efficient. Um, this is certainly a lot more efficient to create um, pigs um, than the SOP. Now, certainly the, the flip side of that, the probably the most efficient one potentially was is the first one where I said, just draw a pig, but look at the results that you ended up with. So be thinking about that as you as we kind of can proceed and talk about systems and how we can put those together. So from a, an Ackley perspective, we, we do visual reference um, points. So, you know, you can see um, on here that it's information is missing because it's yellow. The information is not missing because it's green. It really, from a Ackley perspective, it we, when we look at automated document systems, we want a way that you can, that a person can visually see where they're at and is trainable and it and go through it. So this is kind of just how Nackley approaches this. Second thing is is a guided intake. You can see if I've got a little GIF going here. If I check, are there any pets? Then it's going to ask me new questions. So that's where a guided intake can come in and guide the user so that the questions can be asked in a way that makes sense for everyone to be able to see them. So that way you've got um, guided, you know, you can go as complex as you need to, it basically walks you through. So in a decision-making thing, as you're looking at document systems, you want something that's gonna guide you through the process. And then it, from a production standpoint, if we could have that guide, going through that tells it how to do it to produce multiple documents at once um, based on the answers that becomes a big part of being able to get that extra efficiency uh, how many times in current systems of those of you that said well i don't have document i i'm you're basically doing find and replace or word templates or something like that how often do you have to go through and you create multiple documents for the same client 
you have to go through and fill out their names throughout each of the each of the each of the documents. Um, you mess up, and you have to go back through all of them. I uh, I've worked with a number of firms where they were doing that. It was taking forever. Uh, one firm out of California, they had a list of forty documents that they were providing to the client. It was taking them about eighty hours to go through and do it. And they weren't really complex forms. It's just that there was 40 of them and you had to go through, touch everything, every single document. And what they found after going through the automation process is that they were able to get that down to less than four hours because all the documents could be created at once. So as you're thinking of document systems, make sure that you're looking at one that can create multiple doc generate multiple documents at once because that's going to help you be more efficient when you're creating your, your system. So, so how does NACLI fit into this? Um, it's 100% repeatable for each client, staffed or trained. What we're finding is in less than 20 minutes and we're seeing a 90, 75 to 95 increase in efficiency. So that just kind of gives you a, a feel, flavor for NACLI. Um, but let's talk about your system, how things work, because you're here to understand how to create it. I want to be able to give you some kind of some tools to help you as you're trying to decide um, whether it, whether you choose Nacli or some other system. I want to give you some tools that is going to, that are going to help you. So we, we've already kind of talked about the pig and having you know having things that are repeatable. Let's talk about understanding how do your document production system works. Um, you look at my screen here and you know, this is a state planning type of scenario, but this could apply to any scenario, um, any type of case where you know, the client calls you, um, you, find, uh, you, know, you find a paralegal, you, you do some conflict checks, you ask some questions. What you see as you go through and are do and looking at your systems, and at the end, I'm going to give you a way to download um, the next slide so that you can actually use this in your office and go through it, go through the process. But things that you're looking for when you're when you're understanding your system, one is what are all the steps that you're using to create to go through and create your end result for your client. Um, some of that is going to be document prep. Some of it's going to be other areas. Um, you got conflict checks. You've got appointments to be had. You got client calls. You've got a lot of different things that go into it. You got pleadings to create. A lot of things that go into it. What I want you to think about is first, you're going to be mapping out your process, and so, and this you can download at the end, but basically go through and fill out that I do this task, then I do this task, then I do this task. And we're gonna ask you for process time so you know how long it's taking you to do it. And we're also gonna ask you for wait times. So process time seems pretty straightforward and why we would ask that because we wanna know how long is it taking you to do a certain task. The reason why we ask wait time is the longer the wait time, the longer it, you know, in some cases, it's longer it takes to get paid. So it's a receivables issue. It's also the longer it takes, the, the longer between you doing different tasks, the more time it takes to get an understanding of what you have to do. So to get back into that task, you may remember things, you may not. So the longer the wait time between them, uh, the longer and harder and the more likely the mistakes are. So those are the, and the two pieces that we really want to know when we're doing this. Now, if you go, if I go back, you'll also see attorney review draft documents down here, um, right above the client. This is called rework. And what we're really trying to do is avoid as much rework as possible. So the more information that we can get up front so that we have everything you know clear up in this first part and the the first appointment the more that we're going to be able to draft the appropriate documents for our clients so it really makes a, a big difference in collecting things so the 
the, the less rework that you have, the better. So when you go through this and you find that you're having to redo things, you just put a back arrow and say, ah, I have to redo it. And I, I mark that so that you know that you've, that you could get a real understanding of it. So what do you need to, so as you go through and do this, um, you're going to go through and fill it out, um, bring your team involved, get, get them involved. And let's just say, give you some tips on what to watch for. Um, one is this cognitive bias. So we really go through and we, we jump to conclusions really quickly. Our minds are developed so that we can handle a large amount of data. You know, we, we take in a lot of information every day. And a lot of times we have to go through and uh, get, we have to assess what that is. Now, when we're doing systems, you know, we can be flawed in our thinking because we think, oh, it's happening in this way, but it's really not. So, and the second one is inattentional blindness, um, where we think things are happening, but they don't always happen the way we thought. So let me just, let's just do a illustration here. And I've got a little YouTube video that I'm going to show you. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. So just watch the players in white. Okay, let's pull up the, the next poll. And I, I simplified this. Um, certainly there was, it, it had a number of that were being counted and it was 16. Um, but the question I have is, did you see a gorilla grow across the screen? So 50% said yes, 50% said no. So that's pretty, that what I'm finding is it, because it, it's on a computer um, and you're seeing it, you, you're actually a little bit more attentive to it in this case. So that's pretty good results. The, if I were, when I give this presentation in front of an audience and it's up away from them and they have a little bit more distractions going on, that number goes down to only about 25% will see that gorilla. So what does that, why does that matter when you're thinking about systems? Um, really, it just kind of shows that you've got to start thinking a little bit differently when you think about systems and how you're going through and putting them together. So as you go through and do it, make sure that you're thinking about, wait a minute, am I missing something? Um, and making sure that those in your room, in the room with you, as you're kind of going through and mapping things out, that you're not uh, missing out on information that you really is essential um, it, to the process. Uh, I was reminded, I was reading a book by, um, what is it, Multiplier, uh, Multipliers, um, Wiseman is her last name. And she quoted, um, it, you know, your political affiliation here or not. But when Mitt Romney was governor of Massachusetts, they had a question that came up. And in the room, everyone was in complete agreement with the way it needed to move forward. And so it seemed like a slam dunk. And then he, Mitt, actually took a step back and said, hey, wait a minute, there's no dissenting opinion here. There's no one else saying, hey, I, I, we need to relook at it. So we actually tabled that issue so that they could re go back and relook at it. The reason why that matters to you is there are times when you're thinking about systems and you want to get the system right, is that there are probably people in the process that you don't think about, that they actually have to do something and you need to make sure you're accounting for them and you're not discounting them as well. So that's just what I want you to understand when you're going through and do creating systems is that you're involving the right people and that you're not closed 
off in the thinking about, you know, way it should work. Um, you want to get everyone's input and ideas into the process. Okay. So the next thing is, is let's talk about delighting uh, your client. So you, you've gone through, you've created your system, you're, you, you've gone through and brainstormed how you're going to improve it. Um, certainly, docu you know, if you're document, um, have, creating a lot of documents, document automation is going to give you that efficiency. But let's talk about, you know, what can we do to delight our clients? Um, what, how, do, how can we go through and do it? And this is kind of a, it's called the Cato model and gives you some basic ideas of what to think about. Um, if you think about a contractor, if you've ever built a house, there are certain times that you're really satisfied. I've, I've built a couple of homes and there are certain things that I just want to go right. And then there's certain things that I, I want to make sure, you know, goes better. So when you think about your clients, think about their, there's certain basic needs that they need to, to have. Um, you've got to make sure that you're covering those basic needs at a minimum. Then we can start thinking about um, performance needs and delighters. So the, the, what I like to think about in delighters that everyone's kind of aware of, when the iPhone first came out, that was like a game changer. Everyone had you know, it was a totally revolutionary to what we were thinking about. Sometimes when you think about delighters though, it's, it then you have to keep innovating. So it's not like Apple just stopped with the iPhone. They came out with the iPad. They've come out with other things along the way. They have to keep thinking about delighting their clients. The same is for you. Um, over time, those things that, you know, those things that the iPhone came up with, that you can get on every phone now. So you have to keep thinking about how I'm going to delight my clients because the delighters are the most satisfied. They're the ones that are actually out there talking about you, giving you referrals. They're helping you to grow your practice. Certainly basic needs, if you think about growing your practice, um, they're, they're really not good. I mean, they're satisfied sort of, but they're not going to be out there totally telling other people how excited they are. So over time, think about how delighters move down to basic needs. So over time, what we're seeing in the legal industry is, is there are certain expectations. We now live in a, what, what I call a, an immediate gratification world where we want to go, everything wants, everybody wants things to happen quickly. So we've got to make sure that we're getting our clients, that's their mentality. They're not having to go out and wait a long time for things. They're expecting things to be instantaneous because we really have that instantaneous gratification going on. So I just wanted you to think about how can you delight your clients um, as you're thinking about systems in your office? Okay, ways to delight clients. So kind of give you some, it was staff and, and clients and staff with NACLE. Things that we have found is single entry, uh, reduced headaches, easy to learn, uh, eliminate repetitive tasks, um, online intake to eliminate errors, um, deliver documents when expected. You know, some of these things are like uh, basic needs. We should they, we should just be doing them. Um, but in many firms, this this could be actually delighting their clients, delighting their staffs. So over time, you just kind of keep getting better. Um, and making sure that you're making um, decisions that help to not only help your clients, but help the people that are working with you, making it so that life is easier for them. They enjoy their job more. And that's how systems, you know, you look at a system, it's, it's efficient, it's trainable, it's, um, it, it's easily repeatable. So when you start thinking about docu thinking about how systems can fit into documents, especially if you're document driven, the document automation is going to help give you that what you need in order to be successful. So what I'd like to do, um, so to start your document automation system journey, if you go to nacli.io forward slash systems. There is actually a worksheet there that you can download. It's a simple, a simple worksheet that's going to guide you through the steps that we went through. It will also go into what we called effort versus results. 
um, to kind of take the next step in implementing. Um, you're welcome to go out there, grab that if you so choose, um, and have that so you just have the worksheet on it. Well, now we're going to open it up to questions. Um, And here's a couple of questions that I get regularly. So I'll just answer those. Um, it, and this actually, this question came up when I was at a, basically an attorney retreat. Um, and they were, we, we kind of went through the same process. And what they asked is, when set up document systems, how do I get my team on board? And, it, you know, it, you come into the, you come back from this webinar, you, you go to your assistant and say, hey, we're going to do document animation. And they're like, they might be cringing, they might be excited, they, or you might be the person that's trying to get the managing partner on board. The, the key to getting your team on board is involving them in the process and giving them voice to it. So they can basically let you know where their concerns are let you know what's happening, why things work and don't work today. It, it really comes down to getting your team involved in the process. Um, other questions we get is who should be involved in setting up the document automation? Certainly the attorney should be involved in the process. I personally like the person that's actually doing the work um, usually the paralegal or legal assistants to have a direct, um, a basically a direct input into the system so that they are really the ones that are owning it a little bit more because they tend to have, they, they are using the documents regularly. And that's where I find that is the best success comes. Now, if you're an attorney and you're, you're solo, then it, it's on you. Um, but if you do have a team of staff, I would pick the, the person that's most um, like systems and can is the one that can kind of lead that forward after it's decided to move forward. Uh, who's, next question, whose forms are used, our forms, costs, assistance in design? Yeah, great question. Uh, you use your, in our case, you were, with NACLI, you're actually using your form. So your forms are getting automated. Um, cost, it really just depends on what you want, um, it, how many documents you're doing. It, as far as the system goes, we have uh, the actual software system. It's, uh, we have $100 and $200 package, depending on what you need um, for the first four users. And we do have assistance in design. So we do have what's called a jump start where we can help you through the process um, to make it so that as you go through it, we're gonna guide you along the way. Tim, um, there are two questions in the chat box right now. Oh, in the chat, okay, good. Uh, oh, I assume you use Word. How about Word for Mac? Yes, the answer is yes, we can use Word for Mac. I see this is document design, such as interactive areas and filling in forms. Does document flow management system work? Um, probably need a little bit more clarification on what you're looking for with what you mean by document flow management systems. Um, we do like right now we integrate with uh, Zapier. We integrate with Clio. We integrate with Filevine. Uh, Curo 365 we're integrating with. And we're adding new integrations all the time. So um, I'm hoping that answers the question. And oh, in the follow up, the 100 to 200 is a monthly cost. Abacus integration, no, because they are closed. They, they don't like to play well with others. So integrate with billing. Um, not directly, I'd be interested to know, um, what you're looking for with the integration with billing. Certainly we can send through Zapier. We have people that are using Zapier to get to their other accounting systems to send information and data that you're using over. So that is, that is possible. 
Uh, questions about tabs. Tabs is fairly closed at this point. We're happy to have a discussion with you. Um, if you if you want to sign up for a demo, we can kind of talk through what a tabs integration might look like. Uh, describe your system and how it works. So I try to not be a total sales presentation here. Um, what I would say is go ahead, sign up for the worksheet and we will send you a link as well on how the system works. So you can see how things go through. You're also welcome to sign up for a demo where we can actually dive in and show you exactly how things work and, and help you that way. Any last thoughts, Kim, before we close out? I, I mean, really what we're seeing with document automation, um, kind of like what I referenced before, is that we're seeing a 75 to 95% reduction in the amount of time it create to create documents. Uh, training is becoming easier for the firms that are implementing it. Um, re rework and things that have to be redone are reduced. We're really reducing errors with it. So it really is a great way to see a, a real production um, improvement in your practice. All right, well, that is all the time we have for today. I would like to thank our sponsor, Natalie, and all of you for attending our webinar today as part of the LTRC Industry Insights Series. I would also like to thank Kim for presenting today. If you oh, are curious, you. of course, if you're curious about future webinars, please check out the ABA LTRC page or follow our Twitter at LTRC for updates. You can keep up with NACLI at NACLI.io. We will now conclude the webinar. Thank you, everyone.